Welcome to the Aston Martin DB4 GT. A very special car. This is, uh, during the 1950s, the fastest car in the world. Topping out at about 153 miles per hour. Obviously it doesn't sound very much in today's standards, but now you're talking 70 years ago. So uh, let's see what 70 year old cars feel like. And I'm expecting it to give me a bit of a surprise because it's going to be quite a bit faster than the DB, uh, DB5 that we drove the other day. Well, I hope it is anyway, but <laughs> it's probably the most beautiful car we've had so far on the track. So let's find out. Here we go. The Aston Martin DB4 GT, which is already going a bit too quick for my liking. This car is from the 1960, apparently. And the tires and brakes definitely feel it. Which is uh, a great, great thing why these kind of games are made. Because, uh, let's face it, in the current value, this car is probably about 14 million pounds. And uh, no one in their right mind it's going to take one around the Nürburgring. Especially driven too close to its limit. Because <laughs> I don't think the insurance would pay for it. <laughs> It's, it is surprisingly fast as well for for a car that's from the 1960s. I mean, it's 64 years old now. And we were just touching 140 miles an hour. How fast we're gonna go down in here? Into the compression. Hundred and forty one and we hit the limiter. Feels super fun through that little section, actually. It's got that wallowy kind of feel to it, which adds to the character. And to be honest, that's that's what's more important in a car sometimes. It's, it's how it feels to drive, rather than like the actual performance. Yeah, this uh, 3.7 litre inline six engine there. Feels absolutely amazing. I'm sure 
Forza do not give it justice for the sound though. Quite a bit lighter than the uh, than the Aston Martin DB5 we drove the, just the other day, so I'm expecting a fairly competitive lap time for this car. I have no idea what it's going to do, but I'm hopeful that it's going to be in the eight minutes. I thought I was off for a second then. <laughs> First is such a long gear. That was fairly nice through there. No complaints. Going into what I think is the best part of this track. I think this just got some of the best flow. Attack the curb on this one, and then on the inside. Break at the end, turn in. Use the little bit. Oh, understeer. <laughs> That's okay. Just keeping it in. Break a little early than we used to, because obviously the understeer will catch us if we're not careful. Tap the curb a little bit. Here we go to the scariest part of the track, I think. It's quite bumpy around here, and it kind of gets narrow when you're at speed. last carousel. Uh, I think I might have been wrong. I think it's going to be over nine minutes before we cross the finish line. It'll still be faster than DB5, but I was hoping it was going to be a bit faster than that. Come on, let's go, 140. Can we beat the nine minute mark? Come on, 144. See, the top speed of this back in the 50s was 153. And I'm sure it would have got there given enough room. Come on!
Yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to beat the nine minute mark. Eight minute fifty one zero five, which I think is bloody good considering this car is from the 1960. Amazing. Let's put it on the time sheet and see actually how it did.